thank you, Cheryl, for being here. Thanks um, for having me. I wanted to ask you, we're going to talk about the present, and then I'm going to ask you all about the past. So It's um, very seedy, uh, the past. I certainly <laughs> hope so. Um, but, but tell me about making this record. I mean, it's, you've, you've gone native in Nashville. I have. I, um, I moved to Nashville, literally. I bought a farm there uh, two weeks after I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I was really pretty much hysterical. Um, very rash decision, but I had really felt like up until that point, I lived, I felt like all over the United States. I'd been on the road for 20, well, not 20 years, 15 years. And um, I didn't feel like I had any roots anywhere, and I was newly out of a relationship, and I just felt like I, I, I gotta create something that feels like reality. And I mean, that's not the best way to do it, but I moved there eight years ago, going on eight years, being cancer free. Um, but I literally. <laughs> Um, I had good friends down there. I had done a lot of uh, traveling and guitar pulling with Emmy Lou, and um, had done a lot of stuff with Willie, who was kind of in and out of there. And my sisters lived there forever, and I just thought I'm going to move there. And that's how this whole record came to be. That was the fruition of it. it was just having so many people in Nashville encourage me um, to kind of dip my toe. No, it seems like there's a real community of players and songwriters there. I've really, you know, in 20 years of, my, my record we were just talking about in the hallway, John started 22 years ago. My record came out 20 years ago, uh, I guess a couple months ago. And um, I really thought that that's what the music business was going to be like. I thought it was going to be like what it is in Nashville where you have a dinner party and then uh, after, you know, a ton of beers or wine, everybody breaks out the guitars and plays songs they know, songs they've written, and that is really what happens. And that is a tradition that I don't believe really exists anywhere else. And it's just, for me, a dream. Must be. It is. It's great. And it's great to have my kids grow up with uh, the mentality that they live in a community, um, they, they owe their good fortune to helping other people, there are no paparazzi there, and, um, and everybody there has the same mentality, and that's... That's one of the reasons I love it. So. Well, it seems like a, a, a guitar pull is you sit, you all sit around in a circle and trade songs. Yeah, and you you know for the most part, if it's anything that you know Willie's ever done or Johnny or uh, Emmy or Dolly or uh, John Prine, uh, um, I I any of those great classic songs, everybody knows them. So you play with each other and you harmonize with each other. Um, it's just a, it's a great great tradition. A little different from L.A. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember any night. I don't remember many nights there anyway. But I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I don't remember ever having any any nights like that really. Wow. Yeah. Now, I, I mean, kind of cool things about LA too is that you know I had a lot of parties and um, there were always a lot of uh, actors, you know, and that was fun. But it was like the old school actors, um, like uh, Warren Beatty and um, you know people like that. But Nashville has its own thing, you know. It has its own royalty, and so. Mm. The um, you, you'd been sort of. I mean, you did those Kid Rock duets. I mean, you were mm -hmm. sort of headed toward country, it seems, before you made the album. But yeah. Brad Paisley gave you the nudge. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of have always looked at it like um, I've been like this little suburb outside of the city of country and um, now the format, you know, the city limits of the format have just expanded and expanded and I've been absorbed basically um, because what I've been doing for so long has really been, I believe, kind of like the stepchild of uh, the Flying Burrito Brothers and Emmy Lou and certainly the Rolling Stones during their kind of country heyday of, of Let It Bleed and Exile and um, so to me, it didn't feel like that much of a departure. But now, the country format is a very—they have a very loyal fan base, and uh, they are—you know—they—they they love their their country artists. And I didn't want people to feel like I was doing what a lot of pop stars have done, which is try to cross over into this wonderful format that loves songs. And for me, that's all I know how to do. You know, I don't know how to write grooves. I don't know how to write a top line, as they call it. Um, I just know how to write stories. And so Brad Paisley came to me and said. After I had sung with Loretta and Miranda on the CMAs, he, he came, walked up to me right backstage and said, now will you make a record for the format you belong to? And that was, you know, that actually was sort of uh, what catapulted me into committing to doing it. 
Well, my favorite song on the album is, is the one you wrote with him, is Waterproof Mascara. Thank you. Um, I, don't, I have a feeling he wasn't the one who thought about makeup. I'll tell you what, it's really great. His, he's married to my best friend in Nashville. So, and I told her, I was like, you know, um, it's not every day you get Brad Paisley, um, who's written songs like, I wanna check you for ticks. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and, and Gone Fishing, and you know, songs that are like, you know, seriously man songs, to get him to write a chick song. But, um, but he was great, you know, um, he and Chris Dubois and I wrote that song, it was the first song we wrote for the record, and one of the things that he'd said about the country format is that um, it's, it's great, I've, I've had the luxury of being a, a, you know, a pop artist or a triple A artist or whatever, and I've always written songs typically that were kind of narrative, um, but I've been able to kind of hide behind the characters I've created, and at country, you know, you get in, you tell the story, usually it's first person, and the vocal's really loud, and and he introduced me to a lot of songwriters, but he sat down and wrote this song with me, and it is about being a single mom, which I am. And, um, but one of the things that we talked about originally was, you know, he said, I, I told him, I said, I can't go make a new country record, because that's just not what I do. I mean, I can go and sing Wild Horses and Sweet Virginia and um, uh, When Will I Be Loved and that sort of thing, but I can't go make a new country record. And, and one of the things we talked about is this, this idea of telling the story about what it's like to be alive right now at my age. And, um, and from the female standpoint, which is what we kind of grew up with at country music, we had Loretta Lynn, and we had um, uh, certainly Dolly and um, uh, Tammy, and people that really wrote about kind of cutting edge topics, I feel sure. like. You know, the pill, I mean. The pill, uh, D-I-V-O-R-C-E, when people you know, were embarrassed to be divorced. And, I mean, they're just, they're, there were a lot of topics that were ushered in by these really strong women, and um, I just, I wanted to carry that mantle. And so that, that song, for me, was the, the introduction. Now, it probably won't get played at country because it's too country, is what I'm <laughs> hearing, but, um, but I love it, you know. Well, it's old-fashioned. It's got the strings. It's very old-fashioned. I hope you guys have heard it. It, it, sounds, like, it sounds like a George Jones and Tammy Wynette song. Yeah, it's very much in the Billy Sherrill tradition with... Um, uh, Harold Oakley actually came in and played the pick, pick bass. And, wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's what I love. You know, I, I kind of snuck in the back door through, uh, through good crooners. Um, <laughs> so. Is it strange being a liberal down there? Um, well, I, John, I'm not liberal anymore. You were, oh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I'm a so country you... artist now. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not true. I, um, you know, I do, I do feel like the brand of country that I'm making is very much in line with what I've always done. You know, I'm, I am learning uh, the tricks of songwriting because I do think some of the best songwriting that exists is at country now. Um, you know, all that to say that other formats used to have this, used to have great pop songs. Um, it's not that they don't exist now, they're just crafted differently. I'm, I'm, I'm happen, I happen to be sort of old fashioned and I like a melody, I like a chorus that you can sing after hearing it once or twice. Um, I like the old school craftsmanship. I mean, I love Burke Backrack, you know. I love Cole, Por Cole Porter. Um, I love John Prine. I, you know, I, I, I love songs that take you somewhere. And I'm not so much on grooves and stuff, although I listen to it. I love Justin Timberlake. I love Bruno Mars. I love Rihanna. Um, I love Taylor. I think she's a great songwriter. But for me, at this stage, it's great to be, to feel interested again. That doesn't mean I'm gonna abandon everything that I do to go be successful at, a, at the country format. Um, you know, one of the things that Brad had said to me is that your first song had pedal steel from the very beginning to the very end. And that was followed up by another song, Strong Enough, that had pedal steel in it. And I don't feel like I've forsaken or even sold myself out to make this record, but, um, but I did bring to this record the influences that I've had it, you know, all the other formats, and I've been at quite a few formats um, that I've been they've, at. They've come to you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're my best friend. Um, but uh, I mean, so did you go in a room with these guys and write? I mean, Yeah, I did. You know, um, it's good to get outside of your fear. But, and I will tell you something that happened to me when I got diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, I, I learned how to be comfortable being uncomfortable, you know. Mm. I learned how to to remember that every moment of discomfort is going to birth something that is going to broaden your experience. And um, there was a time before I had cancer that I really, I mean, I did not want to see the audience. I didn't, if the lights were up where I could see your face, 
it was distracting to me. And man, I, as soon as I was done with radiation and started playing, I went out on a tour with John Mayer. I wanted to see, I wanted to see everybody. I wanted to make a connection. I wanted to have that experience that I felt like, I mean, that Peter Frampton was having with me when I went and saw him when I was 13. I mean, I wanted to feel like somebody was looking at me and looking into my soul. And, you know, it's different now. You, you, you play to people like this or like this with their iPads. And, but, you know, I, I crave that and I want us to have the human experience and I want that. Otherwise, I don't want to be traveling and I don't want to be dragging my kids all over the world because, you know, I can stay at home and write hopefully a, a hit song, but that's not for me, you know, what it is. So going in and writing with people, I, I feel like I've had a lot harder things that I've had to, to go through than sitting with somebody I don't know very well and throwing out a line that I kind of know is just a little sucky. Um, <laughs> and, you know, risking it and knowing that, hey, I'm going to throw something out and something else is going to come back at me. And it's at the end of it, we're going to have written something that wasn't created before we wrote it. And that's, there's something lovely about that, you know. Mm.